Hey guys, so JavaScript has been the only contender for the web. It has enjoyed the monopoly for the longest time, ever since its inception in 1997. Nobody has challenged it, you know, there were a few challenges like uh, there was Adobe Flash, uh, Microsoft Silverlight, but they are all dead. But there is a new guy in town called WebAssembly and it's a good fighter too. And its popularity is growing. So today we are going to talk about what is WebAssembly, how it works. We're going to look at a simple example. What it, it means to you if you are a JavaScript programmer. Is it going to die? Should I start learning WebAssembly? What is all about? So we're going to look at all of it. And welcome to Techsy Tutorials. Uh, before we move forward, uh, I want to give a shout out to the, the, the bugsquasher.com. How many of you guys work with clients building their websites only to bog down by emails, uh, phone calls, Skype messages, where client sends you a bunch of changes, right? It's painful, right? Uh, so I'm excited to share with you a new tool called Bug Squasher. It lets you annotate, track, report website bugs with only simple click. And you need to check out under the hood because it does way more than that. And I have an exclusive promo code uh, for my fans. Uh, it's the word TechSith and you can get 20% of the first month. And this is a limit limited time offer. And just to let you know, uh, Bug Squasher is only $29.99. And, and if you work in a team, this is a tool that they will thank you for. And your client will also love you uh, for this. So go, go check it out, thebugsquasher.com and the link in the, and the promo code is in the description. All right, so what is WebAssembly? WebAssembly is low level binary format. Why binary? Well, obvious reason for the performance. It's close to your CPU so your computer can understand. The WebAssembly uh, stack machine is designed to be coded in size and low time efficient binary format. So it takes advantage of the native hardware capabilities uh, that is available in a lot of platforms. And you also might get a better security with WebAssembly as well. So now, since it's a binary format, you can write your code in more than one languages. So far you have, to, you have only one option, JavaScript. Okay, but now you can write in C++, C sharp. Um, there is another language called Rust, uh, which was developed by Mozilla, which is gaining a lot of popularity. Uh, but in order to uh, compile to WebAssembly, it has to be a typed language. So, you know, that's why C sharp, uh, C++, and Rust. Uh, and also, it requires some other stuff. So, but, you know, more languages will be added, um, you know, to. Ultimately, I think JavaScript can be also uh, compiled to, you know, uh, the bytecode if it becomes a type language like TypeScript. Also, it is still in an infancy, which means, you know, it just got started. Uh, but it's available in all the major browsers. So like Chrome, Safari, Firefox, and even Microsoft Edge has uh, support for uh, WebAssembly, which means you can code today in WebAssembly. It may not be that robust since, you know, a lot of things are not available, but you can code it, you know, whatever uh, that is available. So the major question a lot of people ask is, how is it really different from JavaScript? I mean, performance wise and everything else, right? Since we have come so much far with JavaScript, uh, that we, everybody's gonna ask this question, you know, we have invested so much money, time, platforms, uh, you know, the, the, the libraries and the whole, NPM and everything, right? So why do I suddenly want to ch change to WebAssembly, right? So we need to understand how the JavaScript compiles and everything. So let's look at uh, a, a famous V8 engine uh, by Google and see how it really works and we can compare with uh, WebAssembly. So first of all, uh, V8 uh, was written in C++ and it was designed to increase the performance of JavaScript in browser. Uh, basically execution of the JavaScript in browser. So in order to achieve that speed, what V8 does, it, it translate the JavaScript code into much efficient uh, machine code. Uh, it doesn't really use interpreter. It basically converts into machine code. It implements the just-in-time compiler for JavaScript. So the main difference between uh, WebAssembly and 
JavaScript is that uh, JavaScript, it doesn't get converted into bytecode, but WebAssembly does. However, JavaScript is very fast. Uh, that is because all the years of development and the V8 engine is actually powerful JavaScript optimizer, actually. It uses several threads internally. And one, one thread is compiling and the second thre thread is actually optimizing at the same time and it re-optimizes and all that stuff, right? So you get the maximum out of the JavaScript. And also, um, nowadays when you write your JavaScript, you know, it's not what you actually, what actually goes on a browser. So you might write in something else and then it gets bundled, you know, with a webpack and it gets minified. And there's a tree shaking, which actually removes the code that are not being used and all that stuff, right? And ultimately, um, what what gets delivered to the to the browser is it's like a small in size, it's optimal, and it's it's as good as it gets, right? Uh, what you can do with JavaScript. But there might be some limitation with it. Um, it cannot really uh, uh, go as good as in you know, a bytecode. So there is a place for improvement. Uh, maybe, maybe it's you're not gonna completely replace JavaScript, but you might work uh, WebAssembly and JavaScript kind of hand to hand to get to deliver the better performance. So, you, so you never know what the future might hold, right? It's still very early state, but the way the technology, how, how the technology is moving fast, uh, you don't know how fast it's gonna be. So I hope this new technology would, would help you achieve the speed, especially in the gaming area, while keeping the JavaScript alive and um, utilizing the stuff that we already have invented in, with JavaScript. What should you do? Should you start learning C++ now? Um, well, I think it's any any day is a good day to, to learn C++. But I would suggest that, you know, just at least understand what it is, um, how it works, you know, look at the different application. Can you Im improve your project using, uh, replacing some of the things with WebAssembly? So yeah, you can get started now. And this way, you know, when, when the, when the change really comes, you are ready for it. So yeah, I, I, I believe that um, WebAssembly won't com will never completely replace JavaScript, but I would say never say never. Uh, only time will tell uh, what would happen. So now let's look at uh, one a simple example on how WebAssembly works. All right, so let's write some WebAssembly code, and it's gonna be a simple example, okay? So we're gonna write our code in C++. Um, and there's a bit of a setup required, but I'm gonna take an easy path. So I'm gonna, I'm using this um, WebAssembly Explorer, and I'm gonna provide this link in the in URL. Uh, basically when you go to this URL, you'll have these three boxes here, and the left uh, box, you can write your C++ code. And so I'm just gonna say integer square, I'm gonna write a simple function called square, which takes um, a number as an argument, which is also an integer, and it returns an integer. And what it does is it returns number multiplied by a number. A very simple function, right? And when I compile this, it will compile to this WAT format. Um, this is called WebAssembly text format. Uh, it's human readable. You can read what's going on. Um, and when I, it actually compiles down to eventually uh, to the bytecode. Um, so when I download this, it will give me this WASM file. And this WASM file I can use uh, in, in the browser. So I've created this project here, and it's simple. It has index.html, uh, and has some scripts.js, and the file that we just created, square.wasm. Uh, Basically, I renamed it from text test.wasm to square.wasm. And in the index.html is basically, I'm loading the script file, which is script, and then the script file is nothing but it has one function called uh, load WebAssembly. Obviously this is uh, JavaScript 
and here I am going to load this S Q U A R E square dot W A S M file. Okay, and um, here I would take this square and uh, this has, if I open this square uh, dot W A S M, uh, you can actually look at it and it has this uh, 2Z S Q U A R I. Okay, so this is what, what we're going to load. And here I'm loading this uh, Z7 square I. Okay, uh, so it's exporting that. Here I'm going to console log. Uh, square of one equal to uh, basically I'm using this template string and it's gonna do square of one okay it's very simple so as you can see here a square of one is one now if I change this to let's say two uh, I get four um, it's just a simple demo and it works fine Hey guys, so I hope you learned something from this tutorial and if you did, please like, subscribe and provide a constructive comment. Uh, you can also uh, support this channel via Patreon, I'll provide a link in the corner. And you can also translate the video uh, to your native language. I'll provide the detail in the descriptions and um, uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter. Uh, the Twitter handle is techsith1. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. The, and the handle is Texit. Thank you.